very good. I'm going to talk about droplets. What else in BC? Okay, it's raining all the time, so that's a topic. Don't let the exclamation mark to sort of put you down. It's not going to be like Jeb Bush's campaign. But droplets are beautiful. You've seen them here. They have uh, been depicted in the paintings, for instance. Uh, you know, it symbolizes purity. You cannot be uh, sort of uh, um, stop enjoying if you're seeing the dews, you know, in the ladybug, my son's favorite, or in the grass as you go in the morning. So you would really admire them and you get inspired by them. And that's what has been uh, preoccupying me in the past, I would say, 20, 21 years that I've been sort of looking at droplets. Of course, they can be nasty too. You know, you're going to have these dirty windows uh, that you would not like to have uh, if you're driving. You're going to have difficulty seeing through if it's uh, rain droplets are sticking on your uh, windshield. Or you may sort of endanger your life to clean your window, as you can see in here. Okay? Uh, if you have uh, your airplane flying through, the uh, clouds, uh, you would have droplets that are going to impact your uh, aircraft wings. And if they would not shed and stay there, they're going to freeze and there's going to have consequences. Same thing is true for the wind turbines uh, and it's going to reduce its power. Droplets can be very powerful. Uh, you can see that here I'm demonstrating to you that a small droplets can bend a cantilever. This can cause problems for your heart disk, for instance, to get st uh, stuck and not function properly. And that depends on the shape of this droplet and what's that meniscus shape it is. But droplets can be good. Uh, you know, it can be used as pesticides if we know how to make them to stick on the leaves. And that's sort of what we've been looking at. Your uh, printer and all the rage about the advanced manufacturing and materials with the 3D printing are facilitated partly by droplets. You can use spray cooling to cool those high intensity chips. Uh, droplets can be powerful. Uh, there are animals that are actually hanging to vertical walls or even uh, hang upside down due to the capillary force. That is something we study in our, in our laboratory. And again, the shape of that bridge that is formed as a result of droplet getting stuck between two surfaces is so important to understand. How we can manipulate the droplets to do what we want them to do. Of course, we can use something like a body force. Uh, gravity can make the shape of a droplet to be different. That's the center panel that you're seeing compared to the, uh, you know, the one in the left that there is no particular force. We can use electric uh, uh, field in order to rip them apart or change their shape. In this particular example, we have a droplets that we are putting it in electric field. We are ripping it apart and creating tiny, tiny droplets that can be then used in detectors. And that's where you can sort of uh, detect very tiny materials uh, in, a, in, a, in a system that you are interested in. So it's quite interesting to look at and see how you can rip them apart. You can make them to go around, for instance, if you are in, uh, trapping them in an electric field and manipulating it by changing its vetability on either side of it. What is this good for? Then you can sort of create some uh, tiny droplets that are going around, getting separated, getting washed, or getting exposed to different materials, and they can represent a tiny lab that you can sort of hold between your two fingers, so-called lab on the chip. So that is sort of what we are looking uh, in my lab, and that's how I sort of uh, got to be in here by looking at these droplets, essentially. So what else we can do uh, with the droplets and how we can uh, manipulate them is by changing the surface that they are sitting on top of them. For instance, I can have a surface to be roughened to a particular topology that causes the droplet to be repelled. So what you're seeing, for instance, the bottom right shows the droplet is really beating up on the surface compared to the case on the bottom uh, right. And then the consequence is this. The droplet is going to roll away. Or maybe not, because the video is not running. It's as simple as that. But you can imagine that now the droplet is like a tumbling sort of uh, motion rather than getting dragged on the surface. Believe me, we have done this, okay? This work is published and peer-reviewed by good people like you. But this is a cartoon for it. So essentially, this can then uh, present itself for a self-cleaning surface. So if I have a droplet that is getting dragged on the surface, you know, all that stuff is going to be remain on the surface. But if it's tumbling, God forbid, like an avalanche, again, a BC joke in here, then it can sort of clean up everything on its way, all right? And here the video is working, so you can see that in this particular case, I have aluminum that in the other one I've sort of nano textured it, and you can see that the uh, droplets bouncing off of it like a basketball, okay? And you can imagine that if I have a shear flow, an airflow that's blowing over this thing, that it can clear and clean up the surface for you. 
So then how can I take advantage of this? Then we can sort of reduce the icing problem that I mentioned to you earlier on. So the droplets that are impacting the surface, now you're bouncing off the surface, and if there is a flow, it will clean it away so the droplets don't have a chance to freeze. And these are the top views that you're seeing. One is treated, one is not treated aluminum, and one was iced, and the other one was not. So this is a blank uh, slide in here because there's something coming, I hope, later on. It has taken me to places to study droplets. And I think maybe it comes at some point. Uh, it has taken me to experience microgravity. So if the image comes, you see that I'm kind of floating somewhat. It just flashed in there because it was only 20 seconds, these experiments. What's next for droplets? People in Stanford just in the past summer showed that you can use them as computers to sort of uh, be able to have some sort of a logic to see how uh, the, the droplets can be moved in a particular pattern and they always represent zeros and ones and they can be used. Uh, people have used droplets uh, in this case uh, of uh, nitrogen or uh, dry ice, for instance, or small chunks of them that they call them droplets, to have engines essentially due to the sublimination and the propulsion that you would get on a textured surface. This is done by uh, my good friend and a UK connection, Glenn. Uh, droplets are very important. It can really be very important for your hygiene issues. This is what the Splash Lab people in uh, youth are working on. You know, tying it back or where we started from, they can be also very artistic. The image that you can see is a wonderful example of what a splash and the corona that can be formed if a droplet impacts on a pool of liquid. And I thank you for your attention. Nice talk. Uh, so we all know about the hydroelectrical power that you can generate from water. Uh, I was just thinking about in terms of the forces that droplets have, is there any way of kind of converting kind of droplet energy uh, into, into something that we can utilize. I don't know if that's something that's uh, uh, thought about in terms of something like rain falling and kind of converting. Is there a lot of energy associated with uh, drops falling? I see grant application in what you're saying. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, dep <laughs> for instance, one can think of the p uh, piezoelectric materials. You know, these are the materials where by getting stressed, you'll be able to create tiny amount of electricity. So if you think about the, uh, the impact energy of the droplets uh, that are falling on a piezo material, although they are very uh, inefficient, uh, but as I said, I can see a grant uh, material in there to work with and sort of think, I have not come across people who have sort of tried to, for instance, harness the energy of the, uh, of the, uh, of the um, uh, droplets in that form. But what I've seen is, for instance, people have tried to catch the mist in the dry areas that exist in the air, especially in the early uh, hours of the morning, and then direct them uh, and collect water, essentially sort of having a way of netting water of the, of the air. But that's an interesting suggestion. So already we have some output of this meeting, essentially. Thank you. <laughs> so, so we all kind of have a feeling for what the size of a droplet normally is. But what really is the biggest droplet that we can think of? Right, depending on where you're speaking, okay? In the image that didn't came up, so if you're in the microgravity, there is essentially no limits because uh, due to the uh, uh, thermodynamic principles, any body of the liquid that you would have, it will form a spherical form. You know, so essentially you can have gigantic droplets as large as you want, okay? So that will be sort of upper limit. But if you're talking about uh, sort of being on the, on the Earth, uh, then you, when you go above a few millimeters for a liquid like water, because one has to really calculate the bond number, which uh, is the ratio between gravitational force and the surface energy force, that sort of gives you the upper limit of what you may think of a droplet as being a round, nice shape. Otherwise, you sort of get into the puddles. So it's body of liquids that you would have. So it's a few millimeters on the, on the Earth, I would say. The very end. Gotta sort of toss it all the way there. Sorry, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, is there, is this on? Yeah, okay. Uh, can, you, can you talk a bit about the aerodynamic properties of droplets? Because from what I understand, it's one of the most uh, aerodynamic shapes in nature and how that may be utilized in terms of getting droplets to uh, slip off, for instance, uh, airplane uh, wings or something of the sort. So does it have anything to do uh, with the th that that uh, ability to be removed, does it have anything to do with uh, the the shape, or is it simply having to do with the uh, the contact with uh, whatever surface it is in it is with? 
as my colleague from York University, this question is not rigged. But this is one of the things that I actually, I would say, is my claim to fame uh, in order to understand the balance between the adhesion force that keeps the droplet on the surface and what sort of aerodynamic force you require to shed a droplet from a surface. Now, a droplet per se would not have an aerodynamic shape on its own. It always requires some sort of an external force to shape it accordingly. Uh, okay, and actually uh, understanding the aerodynamics of a droplet is very, very complicated due to the deformities that it creates, number one. Secondly, because aerodynamic force then it starts to change the shape of a droplet as it affects on it, and as the, ch as, as the shape of a droplet changes, affects the aerodynamic performance of it, then you sort of get the droplet starts to oscillate in a very uh, special, peculiar, and complex ways uh, that uh, makes its study actually extremely difficult. So theoretically, I would say it's almost intractable to kind of understand in a general form how the aerodynamics of it is. So you have to really uh, empirically study it for specific cases. And it's very important for the examples of the icing uh, and so forth. 